Good day everyone. Today I am going to answer the questions given to us by Dr. Arnold Paramos in the subject Philosophy of History. So basically the topic is all about teaching and reconstructing local history. When primarily when teaching history there are two aims that may be deal that may be touched. These are utilitarian aim as well as intellectual aim. When we say utilitarian aim this gives history a body of useful information necessary for understanding current problems. This may be great interest to our learners as well as love for reading historical figures, characters, events, and facts which are found necessary for solving the present problems effectively. Because of history, we'll learn from the past. Because of history, we'll be able to understand the present and possibly the future. And of course, it, the teaching history could give us intellectual aim, could reach, could gain intellectual aim. The intellectual aim trains to memory, reasoning, presentation, and facts systematically and successfully. This enables learners to analyze and weigh evidences and take right decisions. So in teaching history, the teaching of history enables the students to achieve various instructional objectives in a hierarchical manner. Meaning to say there is a structure to be followed in teaching history. So these objectives are the following. First, knowledge, understanding, critical thinking also is included to hone the knowledge and the thinking ability of our students. We have also practical skills, interests, as well as attitudes relating to historical matters. So these are basically the objectives that are touched in teaching history. Now, in planning as a tool for successful social studies instruction, Basically, when teaching social studies, we need to follow a process. Meaning to say, there is a systematized instruction. First, we define objectives. As a social studies, we lay down the cognitive, affective, as well as the psychometer domain of the lesson. Next, we choose appropriate methods, the methodologies, approaches, strategies, as well as the techniques in a specific lesson. Next, we will also have to choose appropriate experiences, select materials, equipment, facilities. So this refers to the instructional materials, instructional resources that we are going to use. Next, we will also assign personal roles or we tap the stakeholders of the teaching and learning process. We also implement the instruction and eventually we evaluate outcomes. And of course, we refine the process in the teaching, the social studies instruction. How do you encourage your students to care about events that happened in the past? So basically, when I employ the teaching history and other related subjects in the social studies instruction, I primarily consider the multiple intelligence of learners. Basically, when crafting the learning objectives, I consider their capabilities, their capabilities as well as their appropriate capacity in doing a specific learning objectives in align with the learning activities. I also use diverse teaching and learning activities. This refers to the, the variety of activities in the teaching and learning process. Like for instance, I am not just stick to the paper and pencil task, but of course, I dig deeper to different kinds of activities. I touch different kinds of activities. Like for instance, performance-based assessment. We have cooperative learning, we have individual learning, like for instance, collage making presentation, video presentation of a specific social studies lessons. I also connect through essential questions. Basically, I use the Socratic dialogue, the question and answer in a specific topic. So not just the what, the how, and the when questions, but of course, I am going to have the why questions. Basically, the higher order thinking skills of a specific lesson. Next, I am implementing the active learning, the principle by doing one of the activities like for instance i have the topic culture and of course not just i am going to teach the culture the meaning of the culture but eventually they do the learning process they research they made an assessment about that specific topic next i use digital technologies like for instance different web sites and platforms that could be used in the teaching social studies instruction i also have the metacognitive strategies i let the students construct a specific study skills for them to learn better a social studies concept and learning through reflection. This is very important, having a reflection. Because basically, with reflection, there is a long 
lasting, lifelong learning of our students, of my students. And, of course, the major types of learning activities, I have the, the knowledge building activities. So this refers to the helping students build their knowledge. So basically, this refers to the purely concepts, teaching the concepts, the facts, the theories about the social studies. And of course, I have topped this one, the knowledge expression activities. This refers to the opportunities for my students to express their knowledge in a specific lesson. So after having the discussion, I let them construct their own learning by having a product performance-based assessment. Okay, And of course, in crafting my lesson plan and the learning objectives of a specific lesson, I eventually make sure that I included the CPA, meaning to say the cognitive, this refers to the mental ability of my students. They will let, they will analyze something, they will define something, they will explain something, they will discuss something, they will elaborate something. And of course, the next domain that is needed is the psychomotor domain. Like for instance, they will be able to construct a graphic organizer, a timeline showing the major Philippine histories, events of the Philippine history. And of course, they will also to have a design a product presentation, a community development plan, an economic subject. So that's one example of psychomotor skills. And we have also affective domain. Basically, in social studies, we should top the characteristics of our students, the affective domain, the character of our students. So that's very important. We are helping their, developing their cognitive, the psychomotor, as well as the affective domain of our students. We let them na masaisip, masagawa, at swelas, masapuso yung mga concept in the teaching social studies lessons. Okay? Now, we have also the different educational technologies that could be used in social studies. Usually, I included this one in my instruction. Like, for instance, this one, study.com. Basically, there are different resources that could be used in the different websites. Free. And of course, we have the 21st century Century web tools like, for instance, the Google Arts and Culture, the National Geographic Kids, Mr. Beats Social Studies Channel, Crash Course, Smith, Sunyan Education, and TEDx. So these are the sample of the free websites that we could use in teaching social studies instruction. And of course, in my part, I also have my own YouTube channel for uploading my video presentation of a specific discussion of a certain topic. So you can visit also the Neu Horizon YouTube channel for more have a discussion about certain topic in the social studies instruction. And of course, like for instance, my topic is all about culture, society and culture or anthropology, specifically the levels of culture. Discuss the topic and of course my students will eventually have their own presentation of regarding this specific lesson. And after that one, I will have a picture analysis. Basically from the pictures, they could give an insights regarding these pictures. And also I have this countdown chart below. So things they learn things that they want to learn and question answer during the discussion so eventually they will have to answer this kind of countdown chart and of course there is also analyzation activities so like for instance i have here i will give them a specific journal activities they will research this one or they will read this particular study and eventually they will identify the problem research methodology findings or eventually come up with the conclusions or recommendations regarding that specific journal or the commentary learning materials. And then I have also sometimes included code analysis activities, like for instance, having this one by Robert Allen Arthur. So with these codes, they will able to discuss, elaborate something about this code and eventually connect this to the real life scenario, real life settings of their life. Of course, basically it's relevant not just in the life of its, each of them, but of course to the society as a general. And number two question, can you describe your classroom management structure in teaching social studies? So in my teaching, I have different manage management structure. Like for instance, I establish behavioral standards, primarily before 
conducting a proper discussion. I have I will lay down the different learning standards and behavioral standards. At the end of this lesson, they should be able to achieve this one. Like for instance, they will be able to create a timeline, so that one. And of course, I set rules and expectations. I eventually set high expectations for them to achieve. Because basically, the moment we set expectations high one, they will be challenged accordingly to one principle of teaching and learning process. And of course, in my cluster management, we need to be proactive and reactive. So of course, if there are cases, conflict, I will eventually lay down rules and at the same time, be flexible enough. In the, there are different scenarios, be flexible when you are conducting the teaching and learning process. And of course, I engage students in the learning process. So basically, with active engagement of the students, they will be able to be challenged and motivated enough because eventually, they are engaged in the different learning activities and different learning behavior or outcomes. And create positive learning environment. Eventually, of course, there is very good one. Because according to some study, having a positive learning environment makes a good and effective teaching and learning process. And of course, I also have the inclusivity, inclusion, multicultural education. So all of the students should be catered and no one should left behind. So make sure that they learn something from you, not just purely facts. But of course, they learn something that could hone their character as well as their intellectual capacity. And of course, principle by doing, the active learning. So this one, these are the management, classroom management structure that I employ usually in, not just in teaching history classes, but of course to other field of specialization in social studies. Question number three, can you describe the best history lesson you have delivered so far? Yes, in my different lessons that I gave is that they are effective at the same time entertaining. Not just entertaining, but very educational. So I provide different kinds of activities, various activities that could cater the multiple intelligences by Howard Gardner. So basically, not just linguistically learner, there should be kinesthetically learner, logical learner. We have different sets of learners that could be tapped in the social studies instruction. And of course, I will not just rely on the paper and pencil test, quizzes in a form of assessment, different types of exam, and other assessment activities, I also employ performance-based assessment, such as the process-based assessment as well as the product-based assessment. So, of course, like for instance, I will usually I have collage-making activities, slogan activities, timeline-making, different graphic organizers making, and as well as showing the population or statistics of a specific lesson. And of course, in the general education class, such as the GE8, Gen Ed 8, the readings of Philippine history, I usually make them a video regarding a specific topic. Like for instance, preserving the local history as well as the history of Mindanao. They eventually make the preserving cultures through generations using a video presentation. So I have included a rubric as a guide on how, they, how am I going to rate them. And in my GE class, GE6 class, entitled Rizal, writings and works of Rizal, they eventually make up a composed a specific song regarding to how to preserve the country, showing nationalism at the same time, preserving education as one of the tool in nation building. And at the same time, the next generation, the kabataan, the youth as a hope of the fatherland. So allow me to share my video, the output of my students. In the University of Mindanao, ladies and gentlemen, these are the presentations of my students. Araw-araw ay panibagong simula na naman. Isang lugar na tampok ang aming pinagpulutan ng kwento. Ang sudad na halos araw-araw ay hindi kailanman mawawala ng tao. At ito ang sudad na kilala sa kulay na berde. Iba't ibang lugar ay may iba't iba ring kwento at kasaysayan. Kagaya lamang ng aming tampok, ngayong kwentong patungkol sa bayan ng Tago. Tara! Aming kumasin ang pinagmula ng Tago noon at hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Saan nga ba nanggaling ang salitang Tago? At bakit hanggang sa ngayon ay nakapreserba pa rin ito at naging Tagong Tagumpay?
luyo sa mauswagong syudad, ang tinuod nga gigikanan sa mauswagong pag-abante. Gigan sa City Tourism Office, sa tago, nakakuha kami o mga dokumento o material evidences nga nagpamatuod kung asa gikan ang tago o kung nga nung hantod ka ron na napabiling niya pong tago, taging bayan. Kaya kini magpabilin nga bilin mo ang importante kung kay kabahin man kini sa atong kinatuhig isip uh, lumulog yun sa syudad sa tabo. Maraming taon ang namumuhay sa syudad, iba-ibang relihiyon at paniniwala sa bagay-bagay. Kanyang-kanyang estratehiya sa hanap buhay, lumalaking populasyon, naglalakihang infrastruktura at labas loob na transaksyon sa mga negosyo at taong-taong pagulad at pagbabago ang natatamasa ng mga tagumenyo. Pero nananatili pa rin nakasulat ang kasaysayan at mananatili isang kwento sa nakakatandang mamamayan at pasalin-salin hanggang sa bagong henerasyon kung saan nagsimula ang lahat. Tago, tagumpay! understanding the past life of our ancestors of the previous generations on the places we live. It has preserved the present by learning more about the story of Taipei. The indigenous cultural committees, ICC of the Philippines, or the MAD, I believe that they make up 10% of the national population. In 1986, 15 of the more than 18 
IPC in Mindanao adopted the term Lumad, a Visayan word for native or indigenous. During former President Corazon Aquino's time, enacted the Republic Act of 734, used the term and differentiates the ethnic communities from the Bangsamoro people. our cultures and heritage just as those before us did so that we allow the generations to come to also benefit from them. Their names can not only be found in the four corners of the room. We are going to explore the local history of our place that we live in then it might bring us closer to our hometown. The varieties of languages and indigenous craft, tradition and culture is not the end story as well. Yet, it is a closure to the landline civilization. Therefore, history is not about heroes and great people alone. Appreciation of national history begins from the local history itself. It's very important that we should be reminded that history is not all about the past, but it's a connection to our everyday life. Inang bayang siyang kinutya, minimiting siya'y maging halaya. Isang batang minsang lumakas sa propaganda, minsang naligaw, naging buo pero naging utak, revolusyonaryo. Aalalahahin ko kung paano, kung paano mo ako tinignan sa aking mga mata, mga kamay kong nakasara, pinilit mong ibuka. Unang sigaw, unang iyak, karga-karga ng mahal kong ina. Sa unang halik sa pisngi, narasahan ko pang alat ng luha ng aking ama. Nakita kita sa likod niya. Pinapatahan ako at pinapatawa. Sa unang hininga ko, ibinulong ang mga katagang. 
Mahal kita. Happy na rin ang minuti Alin na ang kalayang sa atin Ang bagay na dapat ibigin Tara sabay-sabay natin gawin Sa'y sipan Pamundaman O kabataan Bagay na di Dapat kalimutan Kahit na sa libro Nalalaman Nagtataka Naguguluhan mo yun Gusto mo ba Balikan ang Kabataan pag-asa ng bayan na sanayo Alala nyo pa ba ang sakit ng kahapon? Pinaglaban ng bayan Para ating makamit ng kalayaan Paglaban natin, huwag kalimutan Nagtataka, naguguluhan yun Gusto mo ba, muli ka ng panahon Kabataan pa Anong bayan na sana ngayon Naalala nyo pa ba Ang sakit ng kahapon Pero aaminin ko Na iniisip ko na iwasan ka Iwasan mo ni Tain ba Ang iba pang sekreto nating dalawa Sinisi kita Sinisisi kita Nagalit ako sa'yo Nainis ako sa'yo Nagtampo Hindi kita pinansin Lumayo ako sa'yo Umaga, gabi, lagi mong pinapaalalahanan na nandyan ka lang. Sabi mo, naririnig mong bawat tugtog. Tibok, tibok, tibok ng puso ko sa tuwing nasasaktan ako. Isiga mo sa buong mundo Ikaw at ako tayo'y Pilipino Ipanlaban ko man tutuo Tara sabay magkaisa tayo Nagtataka, hindi na ngayon Gusto mo ba sumabay sa panahon? Kabataan pag-asa ng bayan dito na ngayon Ilalaban ang lahat Pag-isakili ng kahapon Nagtataka Hindi na ngayon Gusto mo ba Salubay sa panahon Kapataan Pag-asa ng bayan Dito na ngayon Ilalaban ang lahat Pag-isakili ng kahapon Kahit ako'y nahumaling sa kilig Sa haranang hatid ng mundong magaling makapangakit Hinihele ng isang kundi mong mapandin lang Pinilit kong manumbalik Sa bawat takip silim hinihiling ko Ipinagdarasal ko na ikaw sana'y muling makaulayaw Tapos niyakap mo ko Pinaalala mo sa akin Na ako lang naman itong laging nangiiwan sa'yo O inyong bayan kong sinta Napatunayan ko, tunay na dalisay ang iyong pag-ibig. How would you resolve an issue between two students' arguments and understanding the history of the past? You give example. So in my history classes, I usually conduct these strategies in a specific argument, I usually establish 
procedures and expectations for student behavior. I lay down basically the rules, the do's and don'ts during an argument of a certain historical lessons. And I, of course, I encourage the development of positive interpersonal skills. Meaning to say, there should have mutual agreement, understand each other's perspectives, and emphasize a willingness for both parties to compromise and a certain argument. And also, I implement conflict resolution strategies. So this refers for thanking each other, for sharing each other's perspectives. At the same time, reaching a peaceful resolution to a certain dispute and argument. I also implement conflict resolution strategies, focus on peacemaking, brainstorm for possible solutions, and of course, develop a report. So basically, with the conflict resolution strategies and report, there will be a positive, harmonious relationship between the students at the same time in our classes. So these are the references that I used in answering the questions given. And thank you so much. God bless.